So where the money coming from? Foreign exchange. Ex exactly. So uh, colonialism today takes the form of foreign grants. And that's what we, if we can stop it, fine. If we can't, then we'll take the Sri Lankan government to a halt by firstly create economic boycotts and if possible supporting the Sinhalese and others, particularly from the left parties, the NLSSP, uh, who are the only people like Vikramabahu, uh, Konradatna and uh, Siritunga Jasurya, to sit down and say, I'm sorry, we are not moving. We are bringing 50,000 people to Colombo and we are going to block the streets until you stop this war. And they are quite capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they will fire at them. I mean, uh, uh, a bunch that were capable of killing several uh, uh, 20,000 singular youths during the 71 and 89 uh, uprising uh, and are now capable of killing what uh, the current figure is 70 Tamils a day mm -hmm. uh, and 700 children killed in the last two months are quite capable of turning the guns on the Sinhalese people. Uh, they might, but with today's television coverage, I don't think they're dead. And the to. attention of the international media Absolutely. on Sri Lanka right now. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> While we're on the, on, the, on the topic of grassroots uprising and whatever, we'll take a few more calls. I'm sure we have a lot of questions on the same. Um, let's speak to Johan. Johan, you're on air. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Johan, and I should thank Mr. Brian Sarevaratna for doing this for us. Um, uh, you actually answered one of uh, my questions I was waiting to hear uh, or actually ask you. Uh, it's about how is Sri Lanka, um, even though we know it are running into huge debts, uh, still managed to run a war, which is killing almost uh, so, so many of our Tamil youths and uh, my brothers and sisters down there. My second question is, what do you see as the future for us? Uh, I, I'm a young guy. I, was, I moved out of Sri Lanka when I was very young. In, uh, in the back of our heads, we always think that all these horrors and atrocities we hear that happen are just a fable. We, maybe it doesn't exist. Now, it's been proven it's not true, but is it really true? Like, what, on what authority do we tell our counter Caucasian counterparts here that this is all very true and very real? And uh, what do you see the future for the Sinhalese and Tamil people? I'm not talking about the government here. What do you think uh, our futures, futures lie ahead? And uh, also I want to know is, uh, is there a government party in Sri Lanka that will actually help the Tamil uh, cause if elected? Is there anything like that possible in the near, near future for Sri Lanka? Johan, thank you for, thank you for those uh, questions. Uh, do you want to take a stab yeah, at any one of them? There are three of them. I'll mm -hmm. answer all three. The first one, I think, was the word that he used, which is the correct word, war. Mm -hmm. This is not an exercise in terrorism. War right. is war. War is a confrontation because, between two armed forces. And there is actually a definition of what a terrorist is and uh, armed forces. Mm -hmm. uh, armed force is an armed group if it satisfies four criteria. Number one, it has to wear a uniform and the Tamil Tigers wear a uniform. Two, they must have an organized command which they have, an organizational capacity and an area that they have controlled. The yeah, Tamil Tigers have. Alignment. That's for sure. Uh, until a few weeks ago they controlled the whole of the Vani. So the Tamil Tigers, whether they have committed acts of terrorism or not is a separate issue. They are an armed group confronting another armed group, the Singhala government. Uh, actually, the acts of terror by the Singhala government are far more than the Tamil Tigers have ever uh, committed. But that's beside the point. The point I'm trying to make is that if there is a war, which there is, uh, and not an exercise in terrorism, then humanitarian law, or to use the Latin word, jus in bello, has to apply. Now, humanitarian law has two parts. One, what the combatants can and cannot do. That's the Hague Convention. Mm -hmm. Now, the, in the Hague Convention, the bombing of hospitals, etc., schools, is illegal. Mm -hmm. Number two is what the civilian population can and cannot expect as a result of this war. That's the Geneva Convention. Now, if war is what is going on, which it is, without any question. Mm -hmm. Once you use battle tanks and helicopter gunships, whether you like it or not, it is a war. 
Right. As I've always said, if it sounds like a war and looks like a war, it is a war. And if it is a war, then humanitarian law has to apply and to ban one side and call them terrorists is illegal on humanitarian law, apart from the fact that it's totally uh, 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 exercise in stupidity, as I've told the EU Parliament. You know, you ba the IRA were banned by the British. The IRA were exploding bombs in London. I was a medical student there. Mm -hmm. So what did they do? They banned the IRA. And what happened to the bombs? They increased. There were more bombs in car. So then they said, now what do we do? They said, we'll have to talk to the IRA. IRA said, how can we talk? We are banned. So they had to then de-ban them and then talk to them. And that's why I told even the EU Parliament, you know, to ban the Tamil Tigers, you are you are creating real problem because what you are doing is to opt out of any uh, the, the negotiated settlement. You call for a negotiated settlement. Negotiated settlement with whom? whom? Exactly. With, uh, with uh, the LTT, but they are banned. And you now say that you have destroyed them. So whom do you negotiate with? With Karna? And whom does he represent? Nobody. And then Karna. And whom the uh, Pillian? And who elected Pillian? You. Uh, <laughs> Pillian. So now the two are fighting in any case, so they'll probably destroy each other. So they have to sooner or later realize that the people whom they're going to negotiate is the people that the local people can empathize with. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's any doubt about it, have a referendum in the north and the east, not with people with guns roaming around. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll ask the Tamil people, do you want to be represented by XY or Pillian or Karuna or whatever, and then negotiate with them? I tell you that he won't get too many votes. The second issue he asked was about, uh, what was the second question? He did ask three questions. Yes. The first one was about the uh, yeah. economic situation, which you've That's already right. answered. And the second one was more like, uh, uh, can the Tamils and the Sinhalese, what's going to be the future? Ah, yes, the future. The, the critically important. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, funnily enough, the people on the run, I'm sure the Tamils are on the run because uh, they can run one way into concentration camps or run the other way and jump into the sea mm -hmm. uh, or be murdered. Uh, they are on the run, no, no doubt. And so are the LTT, except that the LTT can melt into the jungle. And that will be the end of that, because the single government can never take on a guerrilla force. Mm -hmm. A conventional army cannot take on a guerrilla force, and we need to have never been done, ever. Mm -hmm. And I've been in the Mulatibu jungles. Those jungles are jungles. If you don't know where you're going in the Mulatibu jungles, you might as well write your death, cert death certificate out straight away because you are heading for either a snake or be trampled by